Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. I hope you guys are all having a wonderful Monday. Today I'm going to be explaining to you why I believe this Crested Gecko right here is the future of Crested Geckos. First, I got to explain to you some things about base colors, patterns, a whole bunch of stuff to hopefully explain this as best as I can and my thought process behind why this is the future of Crested Geckos. So the first thing we need to discuss is what is a base color and what is a pattern color. And I'm going to be showing you guys some of my geckos here. I made some really easy charts to look at so that you know what pattern colors are and what base colors are. But let's take one of my favorite geckos and my first gecko, Lissa. This gecko is very easy to tell what is a base color and what is a pattern color. Now as we can see, Lissa's entire side is like a dark black color. And her dorsal is like orange mixed with a little bit of cream, kind of whitish color, right? Now let's take a look at this chart that I made here. This is the base colors chart, and as you can see, the base colors could be white, yellowish, orange, brown, red. The purple represents lavender, which is generally like a light gray color, and black. So which of these colors did we see on Lissa? Well, we did see the white, but it was in her dorsal, so we know that's not her base. We also saw orange, but she's not mostly orange, so we know that's not her base color. And we saw black. Now, the majority of her body is black, so we know that her base color is most likely black, right? And the way I like to think of geckos and their patterns is that the base color is underneath the entire gecko and that the pattern color is on top of the base color. This is just an easy way to think about it. Now, if you look at where your crested gecko's ear is, even if your gecko has a lot of pattern, chances are around their ear is not covered in pattern, so you can easily tell what your gecko's base color is. So, for example, we have a red patternless gecko, we look by their ear, it's red. We look at any of the other geckos that I have that have pattern, we look around their ear. They usually don't have pattern by their ear, so that's why it's an easy way to look and see what their base color is. So, for example, let's just take King here. Uh, we look by his ear, we can tell that he has a dark black base color, right? Okay, so now that we know what our base colors are, we got to look at some of the pattern colors, okay? So here we have some of our pattern colors. As we can see, our pattern colors are a lot more limited than our base colors are, right? Our base colors, we pretty much had any color, but our pattern, we're pretty much limited to anything between white and orange. Now you got like your off-white, your eggshell, your cream, all the fancy words for all the cream colors and orangish colors. But we only have those colors. We only have things between white and orange, right? So now let's put them together and let's take a look. Okay, so now we can see both of them and we can compare and contrast them, right? Okay, so we see that some of our pattern colors are base colors. And we see that some of our base colors are pattern colors. But what we see is that some of our base colors are not pattern colors. Specifically, brown, red, lavender, and black. Those cannot be pattern colors, okay? Now I understand some geckos may have if you could see my air quotes, brown pattern, but generally when they have brown pattern, that means at one time they were orange and now they're most likely older and it has faded out to brown. So I guess technically geckos can't have brown pattern, it's just usually that it's faded orange pattern, okay? So that's why I did not include it in the pattern colors. But in this video, we're gonna be specifically focusing on the base colors of red, lavender, and black. Now let's take a look at the gecko on the left side of the screen. Now this is a drawing, you'll probably notice. Obviously this is not a real gecko. This gecko has a red base color, right? And it has black pattern. Now I want you to think, have you ever seen a gecko that looks like this? Red base, black pattern. Chances are you probably haven't. I certainly haven't either, probably because they don't exist yet. <laughs> now let's take a look at the gecko on the right side of the screen here. Have you seen a gecko that looks like this? You probably have because this is a real gecko and I actually own this gecko too. As you can see, it is a red base color with some kind of like orange and yellowish color with some white portholes, right? So obviously that's a real gecko. The one on the left with the red base and the black pattern is not, just because as we can see, black is a base color, not a pattern color, but red is also a base color, not a pattern color. So that means those two cannot share the same gecko, right? Right, okay. So I'm glad we're all on the same page with that. Now the picture I'm using here is from Altitude Exotics. I had the opportunity to buy this guy from him and I obviously had to do it. How could I pass this up? But let's take a look at the gecko here, okay? So you see some arrows. We have my base color chart. So let's take a look at my base color chart here. Now the purple is supposed to represent lavender, which is generally like a light grayish color, right? So now if we look at the arrow pointing at the front leg of this gecko, we can see that this is indeed the lavender color that I'm talking about. And if we look at the other arrows, we can see that he has some kind of like darkish spots above his leg. And he also has some other little lavender-y spots throughout his red pattern, right? 
we know that red is a base color, but we also know that lavender is a base color. Now you may be wondering, how is this possible? Well, I believe this to be one of the first geckos, and one of only probably a handful of geckos on the planet, crested geckos, that have two base colors at the moment. We know lavender cannot be a pattern color, we also know red cannot be a pattern color, so that can only mean one thing. This gecko has two base colors. And you can see that he also has all the other normal pattern colors like the off-whitish creamy color on his sides and his dorsal. So we know for a fact that this gecko has two pattern colors, right? Now you may be asking yourself, okay, so what? That's kind of cool, but what does this mean? Well, one of my dreams, and actually I think I mentioned this in a video earlier this year, is to create a gecko that has red and black pattern. Now when you saw that fake gecko a little bit ago that had the bright red base color and the black pattern, I mean that look would be a pretty cool gecko if it actually existed, right? Well that's what I'm hoping to do with this gecko right here. Now thankfully this is a really nice red with good structure and it's a male too, so this just seemed like the perfect gecko to test this out on, right? And you may be wondering how I'm going to exactly do this kind of testing. Well, if we look at the base color chart here, you see that red is next to lavender, and lavender is next to black. Now that isn't random, I purposely did this, because generally speaking, this group of three colors, red, lavender, and black, usually work pretty interchangeably with one another. For example, let's say you're working on a red project. Now you may occasionally throw a dark base animal in there to make your reds pop more. I'm not sure exactly why this works this way, but that's just something you do. You throw a dark base animal in there and you'll get some nicer reds. Same thing goes for the lavender. Sometimes if you breed a lavender and a red, you're going to get either really nice reds or some really nice lavenders. They all kind of work in this little group where they all work really nice with each other. And so since this gecko shares the red and the lavender color, it would make sense that if I bred this gecko with, say, a dark base female, that potentially we could get some geckos that have a really bright red color, but also where the lavender is on this gecko, it would be a dark base color on the babies. Now you may be wondering what's the big deal about that? Well, not only would it be probably a world's first where we're having geckos with two different base colors, two very drastic base colors, it would also be a super sick looking gecko. I mean, imagine a gecko that's bright red, has a bunch of white pattern, and it has a black base color. And this is where the world really starts to expand because there is an endless amount of things we could do with this. For example, we see here that this male still has his normal pattern colors, like his cream and his kind of off-whitish color, right? We could create a gecko that has bright red, but also a very contrasting dark black color on it, right? Maybe, you know, the front legs are black, his head's black, but the rest of his body's bright red. And we could create a gecko that has white pattern on top of that. So it'd be bright white, bright red, and dark black, all on the same gecko. That would really give a new meaning to the word tricolor, like that would be a sick gecko, right? And that is actually within grasp now that we see this gecko here. Now I know I'm dreaming big and I know that there is a significant chance that this project might not work out, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to share it with you here today, is in case this project does not work, which it might not, this is just something that I thought was amazing. The potential here is, you know, unlimited. We could create an amazing amount of things. And then when we start talking about pattern colors, because remember, red and black are base colors, right? So anywhere where you see base, it could be red, it could be black. But we also have the pattern to consider, which right now on this male here is kind of a creamy color, right? But those pattern colors, we could do anything with. We could make it orange, we could make it white, we could make it cream, we could make it an extreme harlequin, we could make it a flame. You know, there's just a lot of different things going on here. There's a, an insane amount of things that we could do. And those are just patterns and bases. Then you start throwing things in like spots. Or imagine a lily white with this. You have a lily white that has a red base, a black base, and it has the bright white. I mean, insane, right? There's just so many things going on here. I was really excited about this gecko. I really, really, really hope it works out. Fingers crossed. If this actually does work out, eventually, down the line, a long time, you know, maybe 10, 20 years from now, there could be geckos that have, you know, orange and black base colors or black and white base colors with white pattern. I mean, there's just an endless amount of things that this gecko could bring to the table. I realize that it's only one gecko and my hopes are high and I'm just hoping that it does work out. But that's one of the reasons I shared it with you here today. It may not work out. 
And if it does work out, I'm not exactly sure what this is going to be. If it's going to be like a new morph in itself, if it's just going to be a trait that some geckos have, it's hard to say. It gets a little bit confusing. And I'm not that great with all the genetic stuff yet, so I'm still figuring it out. But in the meantime, I'm just going to work on producing some red and black geckos. Now, one of the ways I'm going to kind of test this out too to see if it's actually a viable option is if I breed this with another red-based gecko, right? A gecko that doesn't have any lavender pattern or any dark pattern. If I breed it with another red gecko and it still has the lavender pattern on the legs, then we definitely know that something is going on here that is extraordinary. If I just get some normal red babies, then the chances are a little bit less, but there's still some potential here. And I thought I could be sharing with you something that might change the future of our crusted gecko breeding. Anyway, hopefully this video was interesting to you. I'm sure excited for 2020 and what this guy can produce here. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in next week's video.